Barakata Yahawa, Barakata Yahawashai, Bahasham, Rakaha Kodash, Barakatum. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, glory, and infinite honors to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahawashai. Double honors to the apostles and elders, the great millstone who rule and teach well. In peace and salutations to you, sincere Aki, I'm out there, pushing this word in truth and sincerity to the four corners of the globe. May you brothers endure until the end. This is the Brother Raya with another video, and I'm going to start it off with an article on RT.com titled, General Agreements Reached on Iran Nuclear Deal. Tehran says, as fifth round of talks with U.S. to revive accord begins, and whatever happens with the JCPOA or the Iranian nuclear deal, whether the U.S. comes back or not, or whether it holds or falls apart, there will be a war against Iran, and it's going to play into the bigger battle in the Valley of Jehoshaphat in that Middle Eastern region. This is Joel chapter 3, I'm going to start at verse 9. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles, the heathen Gentiles, which is exactly what the men of the Lord, the prophets of the Most High, chiefly through GMS or Great Millstone are doing by going out onto the highways and byways to preach this word, as well as putting up video epistles like this, proclaiming among you heathen Gentiles too, prepare for war, war with Iran, World War III, nuclear war, the War of Armageddon, the battle in the Valley of Jehoshaphat. Wake up the mighty men, let all the men of war draw near, let them come up, beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears, let the weak say I am strong, assemble yourselves and come all ye heathen, ye Edomites the so-called white people, you Ishmaelites, or so-called Arabs, you Elamites, or so-called East Indians, the Ammonites, or the so-called Japanese, the Hamites, or the so-called Africans, etc., etc., and gather yourselves together round about. Thither cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Yahweh, and those mighty ones are the death angels of the Most High, holding back this great destruction, waiting to get the go-ahead to fully release it, which is going to mainly happen after the MOB, the microchip implant is mandatorily implemented. Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, which is Yahweh's Shapat in the Hebrew, which means Yahweh's judgment. For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. And when you go up to the first couple of verses of this chapter, you'll see that these heathen nations are getting gathered down into the valley of Jehoshaphat to be judged by Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai for afflicting the apple of the Most High's eye. The true children of Israel, who are the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. And at the top of that list, according to Psalms chapter 83, of the heathen nations that confederated to come against the children of Israel, are you Edomites? Verse 13, put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come get you down, for the press is full. The fats overflow, for their wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of Yahweh is near in the Valley of Decision. And if you have that spiritual eye salve, you can clearly see that the day of Yahweh is very near in the Valley of Decision. And as we read that article, you'll see that these different nations are feeling uh, somewhat positive about the JCPOA holding. But when you know the scriptures, you know that at the end of the day, it's futile. And that war with Iran playing into the bigger battle in the Valley of Jehoshaphat will take place. And nothing will avert that prophecy from coming to its fulfillment. So until that day comes, we're going to talk until we're blue in the face, warning you people and telling you that this battle in the Valley of Jehoshaphat is inevitable. So don't get your hopes up hearing about peace talks or peace treaties or anything like this. The only thing coming to this planet is lamentations, mournings, and woe. For two-thirds of the nation of Israel who are hard-headed and refuse to return under their power, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, and you heathen nations for your wickedness. This is Habakkuk chapter 2, verses 1 to 3. I will stand upon my watch, proclaiming among the Gentiles to prepare for war and not for peace, and set me upon the tower, and I will watch to see what he will say unto me, and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And Yahweh answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon the tables. Go out onto the highways and byways to preach this word, as well as putting up video epistles like this, that he may run that readeth it. And the elect of the nation of Israel, 
hearing the words of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai from the prophets, and then doing what they need to do to stain the good graces of their power, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, so they can be so they can hope to have that protective hedge and be saved from these coming calamities of Jacob's trouble. For the yet, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Like I just said, no matter what you hear about peace talks or treaties or things going good between these different nations, the vision will not lie or tarry because it will surely come and it, it will surely come and uh, come to pass. The battle in the Valley of Jehoshaphat will take place and nothing will happen to avert it from taking place. But now let's get to that article. Iranian government spokesman Ali Rabibi has said he is optimistic about the progress of indirect negotiations between Tehran and Washington to revive the 2015 Iran nuclear deal ahead of a fifth round of talks in Vienna. Efforts at securing the U.S. and Iran's full return to the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, or the JCPOA agreement, have been mediated by the treaty's other signatories for several weeks in the Austrian capital. General agreements have been reached on major disputes, Rabi told a news conference on Tuesday. On the lifting of sanctions, the remaining cases are very minor, and given the negotiation process, we are optimistic about resolving the remaining and minor, minor and practical cases. Iran's top negotiator at the talks, Abbas Arakchi was more guarded in his comments to state media saying serious and important issues still need to be addressed. And hey, this guy's in his right mind. He knows not to trust these uh, American Edomites or any of these other Edomites because you Edomites have a track record of making treaties and breaking them. And it's going to be no different with the, with the JCPOA. There was also a positive outlook on the talks on Tuesday from Mikhail Ulyanov, the Russian negotiator and ambassador to the UN's nuclear watchdog, the International Atomic Energy Agency, IAEA. In a tweet, he said, the fifth round of negotiations can be final, but said to be on the safe side that he would prefer to say, let's see. His counterpart, Robert Maley, said in a tweet on Monday night, that the previous round of talks was constructive, but that much work still needs to be done to clinch an agreement. U.S. President Joe Biden has expressed willingness for America to return to the JCPOA, which relieves Iran from sanctions in return for restrictions stopping it from developing nuclear weapons, an aim Tehran denies, and best believe that these Russian Edomites have uh, given these Iranians all the means they need to quickly create nuclear weapons. A revival of the JCPOA would reverse the 2018 decision by Biden's predecessor, Donald Trump, to pull the U.S. out of the agreement and instead impose fresh sanctions on Iran. And hey, that was all done at the behest of the state of Israel because those Israelis who aren't the, the real Israelites, they're actually Amalekite Edomites, want a war with Iran so they're doing anything they can to uh, provoke a war with Iran because they know the U.S. will get dragged into it on their side, which is exactly what it says in Jeremiah chapter 49. The least of the flock shall draw them out. But hey, when uh, the state of Israel does whatever they do to provoke a war with Iran, not only will the U.S. and these NATO nations be dragged in on the side of Israel, but on the side of Iran, Russia China and their other allies are going to be dragged in to help them, which again is going to play into the bigger battle in the Valley of Jehoshaphat. After the U.S. withdrawal, Iran began to embark on a number of breaches of the terms of the agreement, including limits on the purity of uranium it may produce and how much it may stockpile. On Monday, Iran's nuclear authority said it will continue to enrich uranium at up to 60% purity, a development Tehran announced last month, last month, which is far beyond the 3.67% level set out under the JCPOA. Previously, Iran's breaches of uranium purity limits 
which are required by its parliament, have proved a major roadblock for the Biden administration to lift sanctions. In a sign of possible progress for the JCPOA talks, the IAEA announced on Monday that Iran had agreed to extend a monitoring deal allowing the UN watchdog to inspect its nuclear sites. A temporary agreement had been in place after the Iranian parliament voted to ban UN expect inspectors from its nuclear facilities in protest against the lack of sanctions relief from the European parties to the JCPOA. That's it with this article, but back in Habakkuk chapter two, verse three, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie, though it tarry, wait for it. Hey, hearing about these different nations, hoping that the JCPOA will hold and there won't be war with Iran, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. War with Iran will take place, which will play into the bigger battle in the Valley of Jehoshaphat. And while you've got these different nations giving lip service to each other, trying to avert war with Iran, look at what their militaries are doing. It proves otherwise. For the longest time, you've had the U.S. talking about taking its troops out of Iraq and Syria, but they haven't done it. And also, as we'll see in this article from AP News, Russia is deploying nuclear capable bombers to Syria for training. And why would they be doing that? They're training because they know that a conflict could break out at any time, which is exactly what's going to happen. A war in Iran playing into the bigger battle in the Valley of Jehoshaphat. And these Russians are training so they'll be more easily able to go and aid Iran when the U.S., Israel, and these other nations go to war against it which plays into Ezekiel chapter 38. This is Ezekiel chapter 38. I'm going to start at verse 1. And the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog. And this is the biblical name for those Russian Edomites. And in the scriptures, besides being known as Gog, Russia is also known as the North Country in Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 9, and the Medes in Isaiah chapter 13, verse 17 the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal, and prophesy against him, and say, Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal, and I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws. And that's the Most High putting that old Soviet Union spirit back onto these Russian Edomites. And if you've been paying attention to the news over these past couple of years, that's exactly what they're doing. Russia has building back up its political, economic, and military ties with different nations across the planet. And I will bring thee forth. An example of that is Russia deploying those nuclear bombers to Syria for training and all thine army, horses and horsemen, and all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords, their military assets being gathered down into the Middle East for the battle in the Valley of Jehoshaphat. And besides them doing training with those nuclear capable bombers, Russia also has mil other military assets in the Middle East since they were a major part in helping Bashar al-Assad in the Syrian civil war against ISIS, which was nothing more than a proxy mercenary army for the United States of America in the state of Israel. Persia, Ethiopia and Libya with them, all of them with shield and helmet. And Persia is, of course, the ancient name for Iran. Gomer, which is speaking of Turkey, and all of his bands, the house of Togerma of the North Quarters, and all his bands, and many people with thee. Here's the point in verse 7 Be thou prepared and prepare for thyself, training with nuclear capable bombers in Syria, thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee and be thou a guard unto them, protecting them against other nations, such as protecting Iran against the United States of America, Israel, and their allies, which like I said earlier, which is more than likely what these uh, training drills are for, for them to be able to more easily deploy to help Iran in the event when Israel and the United States of America declare war against them. 
The Russian military said Tuesday it has deployed three nuclear-capable long-range bombers to its base in Syria, a move that could strengthen Moscow's military hold in the Mediterranean. Russia's defense ministry said that three Tu-22M3 bombers have arrived at the Haminamim Air Base located in Syria's coastal province of Latakia in the main hub for Moscow's operations in the country. The ministry said bomber crews would fly a series of training missions over the Mediterranean. The Tupolev Tu-22M3, codenamed Backfire by NATO, is a supersonic twin-engine long-range bomber which is capable of carrying nuclear weapons and has a range exceeding 5,000 kilometers, 3,100 miles. Russia has waged a military campaign in Syria since September 2015, allowing Syrian President Bashar Assad's government to reclaim control over most of the country following a devastating civil war. The Russian ministry said the runway at Hymenamim had been extended to host the heavy bombers and a second runway has been modernized. Russia also has expanded and modified a naval base in the Syrian port of Tartus, the only such facility that Russia currently has outside the former Soviet Union. And also Russia has been doing deals with Sudan lately to build up uh, military installations there. And then over in the Arctic Ocean region, Russia has been militarizing it. And that area is going to play a big part in World War III, because like I've said in previous videos, Russia shooting its nuclear missiles from itself and from the Arctic Ocean region to hit its targets in the U.S. would be the shortest trajectory time it would take for its nuclear missiles to hit the U.S. As part of President Vladimir Putin's efforts to beef up Russia's military amid tensions with the West, the Russian Navy in recent years has, now listen to this, has revived the Soviet era practice of constantly rotating its warships in the Mediterranean. Back in Ezekiel chapter 38, verse four, and I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws. The most high bringing the Russians back into that old Soviet Union spirit. The bomber's deployment marks the first time since the Cold War, when Russia was known as the Soviet Union, that Moscow has stationed heavy bombers in the region. About 60 Tu-22M3s are estimated to remain in service with the Russian Air Force, and some have flown bombing missions to strike militants in Syria from their bases in Russia. Russian media reports said that Tu-22 M3 could be modernized to carry the latest hypersonic missiles. Hey, once more in Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 3, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. War with Iran and the bigger battle in the Valley of Jehoshaphat will come and will not tarry. So that's it with this video. And with this video, I hope you sincere Akim were edified. Just another quick prophecy update to show you that with each passing day, we're getting closer and closer to the battle in the Valley of Jehoshaphat, Yahweh Shai making a second coming, our salvation and the downfall of these heathen nations, chiefly of the Edomites. So as always, I'm gonna say a Bad Babal, Kwam Yasharala, and until next time, Shalom.